I hope to encourage people. One of the things that's been painful about what I've been doing with my wife as we've traveled around the world for the last number of years is to see how desperate people are for an encouraging word. There is nothing that people like more and need more than to be listened to. If you could envision a path forward out of your misery, let's say to somewhere better, what would that look like? And it's not a question people ask themselves with enough depth. And then having developed that vision, what are the strategies that might be put in place to make that more likely? And again, not in a manipulative way, but if you had to conduct yourself in the proper manner to bring about this desirable end, or at least to move towards it, how would you organize your behavior? Wait. Now, the problem with that is it leaves you without a goal, and it also leaves empty space, which you immediately have to fill. And so often people feel disquiet because now they don't know what to do, and they miss that rush because they're no longer pursuing something. And so it's very important to know that positive emotion is experienced in relationship to a value, valued goal. And then the question becomes, well, what's the most valuable goal to pursue? What people don't understand about that in some sense is that the purpose of your life is not going to be happiness. Sometimes it is, sometimes that will come, but there will be difficult periods in your life and happiness won't suffice then. But what you can have in your life is an adventure. You can have an adventure. There's no doubt about that. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One is you don't know what's going to happen if you say what you think. Now, I don't mean incautiously and I don't mean provocatively or any more than necessary. You don't know what's going to happen. So that's very adventurous. But also, if it's you and your voice, then it's your adventure. And if it isn't, like if you're crafting your mm. speech or manipulating in any way or parroting or abiding by the dictates of the crowd, then I don't know whose adventure you're having, but it's not yours. Take on some responsibility. Do something for other people. You're doing something for yourself while you're doing that, even if you don't know it for sure, because you're a community across time. Find a job, do your best with the customers. Don't be above your job. You're going to get an entry level job when you're a kid. Well, what else would you want? You want to be the boss? What do you know? You don't know anything. You could be the boss of your job. You know, if you're working in a grocery store, or you're working in a convenience store, assuming you're not working for terrified tyrants, you can be nice to the customers. You can develop your social skills. You can learn how to handle a boss employee relationship. And if you go and show yourself as competent, there'll be a trial period. But if you go show yourself as competent, all sorts of doors you didn't even know were there will start opening like mad. People have been after me for a long time by, because I've been speaking to disaffected young men. Now, what a terrible thing to do that is thought the marginalized were supposed to have a voice. It's making you emotional to talk about it. Well, God, you know, it's very difficult to understand how demoralized people are. And certainly many young men are in that category. And you get these casual insults, these, these incels. What do they mean? It's like, well, these men, they're, they don't know how to make themselves attractive to women who are very picky and good for them. Women, like, be picky. That's, that's your gift, man. Demand high standards from your men. Fair enough, but all these men who are alienated, it's like they're lonesome and, and they don't know what to do and everyone piles abuse on them. There are no shortage of women out there who've never had a positive relationship with anyone masculine. And so they're very, they're completely unable to discriminate between narcissistic power and compulsion and confident competence. Mm. And so because they can't distinguish that and they're afraid, they put all of that in the same category, which is something like the predator category. And, and that's not good for them because, well, as you said, all men aren't predators all the time. And We're they need to establish a relationship with a man. We all have a tendency to drift in our weakest place, let's say. And so some people become alcoholic and some people will become narcissistic and, and so on. We all have our temptations. And one of the ways we buttress ourselves against that is by having other people say, no, you, there, you're not funny. There, you're boring. Mm -hmm. There." you need to be reined in. And if you deprive yourself of that, that's what happens to hyper celebrities and dictators. They deprive themselves of that social regulation because they forbid it. And then they're, then they're in hell. And sometimes they drag everyone along with them. Genuine ethical virtue, it's the only source of resilience and strength that you have. And it's also the place, as far as I can tell, that the meaning that allows you to set yourself against suffering resides. You know, people talk about life and its meaning and they say, well, life is meaningless, but people never mean that because if you're in pain or you're terrified, 
you're overwhelmed with meaning. It's just not the kind of meaning you want. And it's not a reality you can talk yourself out of easily. And that's particularly true of pain, but it can also be true of anxiety. And so the question is, is there a reliable source of meaning that you can set against that? That's the fundamental question of life. Is how do we adapt ourselves to the infinite complexity that surrounds us? What must we become? Well, you don't merely think that through. I mean, you don't, I don't, human beings in general don't. We puzzle it out and we use all sorts of information to do that. And, and some of these more primordial experiences that are outside the domain of strict rationality, nonetheless point us in an, in an ethical direction. And, and the ethic would be, you should and could be more than you are. Well, then the question mm. is, well, how do you bring that to earth? How, how does that look when you try to embody it day to day? Well, I would say these, and this, these are obviously not my ideas, they're very old ideas. Well, maybe you ally yourself with truth to the degree that you can. Maybe you pursue beauty. Maybe you pursue the love that attaches you appropriately to other people. And you do that because, well, I think you do it because life is very, very difficult. Life is brutally difficult and, and sometimes unbearably brutally difficult. And, and you can see the progressives playing with that notion, it's warped into this sense of victimization, but it does, does reflect some understanding of the underlying tragic reality of life. And so it's good to get that right out on the table to begin with. Mm -hmm. Say, well, you're miserable, you have your reasons, and they might be deep reasons, but if you let the misery demoralize you and make you bitter and cynical and cowardly and make you withdraw, then first of all, that's a failure in the highest sense on your part, and all it's gonna do is make everything worse. And then you might think, well, what do you have to respond to that? How do you respond to that catastrophe and challenge? And the answer is, and this is what Rocky is telling his son in no uncertain terms, is like terrible as things are, there's a lot more to you than you can possibly imagine. And that if you face those things forthrightly and with some faith and courage, then you can have the adventure of your life and prevail even over catastrophe. Like, I think people should plan and they should develop a vision. You have to develop the vision and then be somewhat detached from it because it needs to be updated, right, and modified. You have to note when you're being called to be more than you are and you have to attend to that very carefully because life is extraordinarily difficult and to manage it in a manner that makes it acceptable or perhaps more than acceptable, you have to be everything you could be. And so you establish a goal, then movement towards that goal or evidence that you could move towards that goal mm. makes you happy, produces positive emotion, whereas evidence that the goal is invalid or that you're blocked in some way produces negative emotion. Oh, I think the best practice is to try to not lie, try to stop lying. Listen to your words, feel them. Are they the right words? Do you believe this? Do you believe what you're saying? Is it true as far as you're concerned? And then, then you might find that you have something true to say, but you're afraid to. Okay, then there, there's a place for integration of the shadow because hopefully you can be monstrous enough to say what you believe to be true. And so that means there's a combativeness in some sense in that. Mm -hmm. And so if you can't do that, so maybe you don't say what's true because you want to look, you want to be a persona, you want to be nice, you want to appeal to people, you want to be popular, whatever, whatever it is yeah. you're pursuing, yeah. you're going to do it in a manipulative way. And, and you subjugate your truth to that. That's not helpful. The pe people who need assertiveness training are all, often people who are too agreeable compassionate, polite, by temperament. Now, the problem with that is that they let people walk all over them because they don't stand up enough for themselves. And the consequence of that is they get resentful and then they get bitter and then they get conniving and then they'll mob. They'll do anything for everyone else, but they push themselves beyond their limits and, they, and then they won't even recognize the limits because they feel, well, if I'm not doing everything for you, then, then I'm not a good person. It's like, no, a good person does a little for you like if I'm acting properly with you, say in this conversation, there's something in it for you mm. and there's something in it for me, right? right? And we want that to be reciprocal. Mm. And so the cost of me bending too far in your direction is that I'll become bitter and resentful and conniving. And that and resentment is an unbelievably toxic state of being. That's the problem with hate crime legislation. It's like, who defines hate? And I know the answer to that. Who defines hate? Mm. The people you least want to. So, you know, you want hate crime legislation? 
you just better keep in mind who's going to define what constitutes hate. I, I said in one of the chapters in my books is, is, is focused on putting your house in order. It's like, well, how do you start? Make your bed. It actually took me quite a long time in my life before I made my bed regularly in the morning. Most of my life was put in pretty good order, but that was one thing I didn't have in order. My clothes in my closet as well, all that's in order. Not all of it, I'm cleaning out some drawers right now, but look around and see what bugs you in your room. Just look. It's like, okay, I'm in my room. Do I like this room? No, it bugs me. Okay, why? Well, the paint's peeling there and it's dusty there and the carpet's dirty and that corner's kind of ugly and the light there isn't very good and my clothes closet's a mess so I don't even like to open it. Um, okay, that's a lot of problems. That sucks. That's a lot of opportunity. Pick something and fix it, but not too much. So it, the rule is pick a problem, pick a solution to it that you know would help, that you could do, that you would do. So you have to negotiate with yourself. It's like, well, I won't clean up this room. How do you know? I've been in here for 10 years and I've never cleaned it up. It's like, well, obviously that's too big a dragon for you. Would you clean one drawer? Find out. And so imagine now you want to be happy when you open that drawer and you think, well, that's stupid. It's like, is it? Maybe it's your sock drawer, which I cleaned up in my room the other day, by the way. 